Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnes, and welcome to the Science at ESA vodcast. In this episode, we'll investigate our closest star, the Sun, find out why it's the central engine of the solar system, and look at Ulysses, Soho, and Cluster, the European space missions that have been key to advancing our understanding of the Sun. Life on Earth relies on the Sun for light and heat. The energy released by our nearest star has allowed humankind to survive for hundreds of thousands of years. Today, we seek to understand how the sun works, why it changes, and how these changes influence us here on Earth. Some of the variations of the quality and quantity of light from the sun over short and long timescales most certainly affect the Earth's environment, but how is uncertain. With the dawn of the space age, we learned that the sun also affects the space environment around our home planet. The conditions on the sun, the solar equivalent of wind and storms, can influence the performance and reliability of the technology and satellite services that our lives are becoming increasingly dependent on. Despite its critical role in our lives, the sun is just an average star. More specifically, is a small yellow dwarf star located on the main sequence of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. It is by far the largest object in the solar system. With a diameter that is over a hundred times that of the Earth, the Sun contains 99.8% of the mass of the entire solar system. The most dominant elements in the Sun are hydrogen and helium with a tiny fraction of other heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. Due to its high temperature, the Sun's matter is in the state of an ionized gas, the so-called plasma. Protons and electrons, stripped from atoms, move freely throughout the solar interior. Almost half the mass of the Sun is densely packed within its core. It is here that the Sun's energy is generated. The temperature in the core of the Sun reaches over 15 million Kelvin. Nuclei can be packed together more tightly than atoms. The Sun's outer layers squeeze the nuclei in the core, increasing the pressure and the temperature. The resulting pressure is immense and provides the right conditions for nuclear fusion to take place. The fast-moving protons in the Sun's core occasionally collide and fuse, forming deuterium. This triggers a three-step chain of events that fuse four protons into an alpha particle, a helium nucleus made up of two protons and two neutrons. This helium nucleus is slightly lighter than the four protons that combine to make it. This difference in mass is converted into energy according to Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. Releasing energy equivalent to exploding approximately 92 billion megatons of the explosive TNT every second. Neutrinos are also produced in large quantities as a byproduct of the chain reaction. The energy released during nuclear fusion is in the form of gamma rays. These highly energetic photons travel outwards from the core and reach the radiative zone. Here, in the still very dense plasma, the photons are absorbed, re-emitted and deflected so much that it can take an individual photon hundreds of thousands of years to pass through this zone. The convection zone extends from the radiative zone to the surface of the Sun. In this zone, the temperature drops to 2 million Kelvin, which is too cool to allow energy transport by radiation. Instead, the energy creates huge convection cells of plasma which bubble to the surface. The light that we see is emitted from the photosphere. This is also the region from where most of the Sun's energy escapes into space. The temperature here is just below 6,000 Kelvin. 
the photosphere is not smooth or uniform in appearance. Brighter areas are caused by hot material welling up from below and the darker areas by cooler material sinking. In the chromosphere, the temperature rises to 10 to 20,000 Kelvin. It is the interface to the outermost layer of the solar atmosphere, the corona, which consists of highly rarefied gas with temperatures of several million Kelvin. The plasma in this region emits most of its energy at ultraviolet and X-ray wavelengths. The solar corona conducts heat so well that the sun's gravity cannot hold on to all of the hot plasma. As a result, a supersonic stream of charged particles, mostly electrons and protons, flows from the sun in all directions. This is the solar wind. The sun is extremely dynamic, constantly churning and quivering. This activity continually throws up unexpected features and behavior. Much of the observed solar activity appears to be directly connected to the properties of its complex and changing magnetic field. The sun's magnetic field in its simplest form is like a huge bar magnet. In part, this field is due to the moving convection cells that contain electrically charged particles, positive ions and electrons. These magnetic field lines can at times break through the visible surface of the photosphere and form sunspots. The intense magnetic fields inhibit the flow of energy from the convection zone below, leaving the sunspot cooler and therefore darker than the surrounding photosphere. Sometimes, without warning, the relatively calm solar atmosphere above active regions can be torn apart by catastrophic solar flares releasing a huge amount of energy. When viewed in X-rays, a solar flare can be 100,000 times brighter than the entire Sun. Another dramatic phenomenon, also energized by the magnetic fields of the Sun, ejects billions of tons of material in the form of electrons and protons into space at high speeds. This is known as a coronal mass ejection. These storms from the Sun expand rapidly and within a few days can grow to over 100 million kilometers in size. 